What is future Hall of Fame coach going to do without his Hall of Fame quarterback? Let's check out what former Patriot Rodney Harrison told the Boston Herald. Might bring up a couple of articles. Everyone's saying it's over. Brady this, Belichick, Be Brady that. But, of course, he'll say something about that. But at the end of the day, whether he makes the point or not, he knows the team will be motivated to prove they can win without Tom. Jeff Darlington, let's bring you back in, as well as Mike Tannenbaum and Ryan Clark, our football Friday trifecta. Guys, start with you, Jeff. What are you hearing about the Patriots and Belichick's motivation to win without Brady? Well, I mean, I, I love this. This is not just the story of the year. This is honestly one of the best NFL storylines of the past two decades. You now have Bill Belichick and Tom Brady, two guys who were talked about forever, but now playing for essentially and coaching different teams. Uh, Bill Belichick, of course, is motivated. The one thing I'd point out here is that Tom Brady, when assessing the landscape of the Patriots <coughs> and struggling with the offensive weapons they had last year— they're really not good enough to make a championship run, at least in his opinion. That certainly will motivate Belichick even more, but that's going to be a difficult task trying to accomplish that feat without the greatest of all time in Tom Brady. So a Bill Belichick, one he certainly will be up to, and, uh, and I can't wait. In the words of Terrell Owens, get your popcorn ready. <laughs> Nobody can wait. I'll tell you what, Mike, you've known Belichick for a long time. How does he motivate a team to win without Brady? Yeah, I've been fortunate to work with him a couple of times. And I'll tell you this, Ryan, it's going to be the process. It's going to be one day at a time. And he's intrinsically motivated just to be great. And the standards are the standards. But when we look at his non-Tom Brady production as a coach, it's remarkable. Cleveland Browns had a good team before they moved to Baltimore. The 1996 Patriots, where he was the defensive coordinator, went to the Super Bowl. And then when he got to the Jets with Vinny Testaverde in 1998 as the defensive coordinator, went to the uh, AFC Championship game. And then maybe the one that stings me the most personally is 2008. Tom Brady misses the year with Matt Castle. They still have an excellent season. We have Brett Favre with the Jets, and we still can't catch him. Mm. But I think one other thing really bears repeating here, which is he correctly evaluated Tom Brady and kept four quarterbacks in 2000. Last year, he kept Jared Stidham and cut Brian Hoyer on Labor Day last year. So he saw something in Jared Stidham. And we could talk about all the quarterbacks from Jordan Love, Cam Newton, all these other quarterbacks he's passed on. There must be something in Stidham that he really believes in. And I think they're going to win the division again because I just wouldn't bet against Coach Belichick. There you go. Bold prediction from Mike. We'll hold you to it, man. All right. So, Ryan Clark, I love this. You have a specific story <coughs> from your playing days about Belichick motivating his players. Tell us. Yeah, listen, everybody talks, you know, looks at Bill Belichick in the media and he doesn't really say much, but he's about bulletin board material. The year I got sick, Anthony Smith was our starting free safety and he was backed in the corner to say that he could guarantee a win against Tom Brady and the New England Patriots. And they're throwing double passes. It's bombs and bombs and bombs. And, then, and eventually they throw a touchdown pass and Tom Brady runs down the field to get in Anthony Smith's face. And I knew that was what Belichick Belichick motivated that team with the entire week. And listen, that team was undefeated anyway. They didn't need those types of motivations, but Bill Belichick is always looking for an edge. Bill Belichick wakes up and eats greatness and wins for breakfast. And so he's going to find a way to get this team ready to play and let them know that no one believes in them without Tom Brady. And that's something that they're going to hear. That's something that he's going to pound into their head. And while they're preparing, he's going to to make sure they are focused on their individual task because you no longer have the goat to pick up everybody else. Oh, that's going to be incredible. Mike, I got to ask you, as we look at this, though, <laughs> I wonder how it looks from the other side. Brady, you know, he's going to be under pressure to win, but at the same time, if he doesn't start well, people are going to say, well, he's the same guy without Belichick. How does that play out for Brady and how he looks <laughs> oh. at the season? Well, I think, fortunately for Tom, he has a really good team. He just needs to be the point guard. I mean, those weapons are incredible. They have three tight ends with Gronkowski, Cam Bray, O.J. Howard. They have two basketball players on the outside led by Mike Evans. They solidify the offensive line. So, all to And Tom's really smart. He's not going to turn the ball over. And if he just distributes the ball to those playmakers, they're going to have a good season in Tampa Bay. All right. Ryan and Jeff, I want you to both weigh in on this. Who has the better season? Patriots, Bucks. Ryan first. Well, for me, for me, it's going to be the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm not so sold on Jared Stidham the way Mike T is just because Bill Belichick yeah. has tabbed him. There's <laughs> only one 
Tom Brady, so I'm going with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Okay, Jeff Darlington? I've seen what Tom Brady can do. I haven't seen anything of what Jared Stidham can do. The Bucs are going to have a better season than the Patriots. Quite frankly, I don't think it's even close. <laughs> All right. We're going to hold you guys to this at the end of the season and keep an eye on it. All right. Thanks, guys.